It's October 30th and I'm heading out for my first bow hunt of the year. Yes, it's been a crazy year. This is as late as I have ever got out for the first time. And it is about 30 degrees and 23, 25 mile an hour wind. So it's gonna be a breezy sit. I'm just gonna sit back, relax, and enjoy my time in the stand. So evidently I didn't hear Aaron when he told me there was no chair in the ground blind where I'm sitting. So I'm on my knees for the next three hours. But I'm here, I'm gonna make the most of it. I don't know how long it's been because my phone just died. Actually it died about three minutes of being in here. But I can tell you this much, kneeling is not a whole lot of fun. Heading into Alec Pro Firearms to pick up a new 6.5 Grendel AR pistol. Let's go get it. You are being recorded, just in case you try to pull anything stupid. I know you, like that. They can't, they can't like even that. see me right now. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. We're gonna sight this bad boy in right there. Already got it built. This is going on the vlog, by the way. <laughs> What's a vlog? I don't know, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> Ears are on. Okay. Aaron, I'm going center. Oh god, why did you give him a camera? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's going. Oh America. Oh. I saw that one. Oh! <laughs> Look at these guys at Alec Pro Farms. You call them up. Tell them you need a 6.5 Grendel. They say, when do you need it by? And I told them this afternoon. They said, we should be able to do that. You need an optic? I said, I think I do. Vortex. So put on a Vortex optic, getting it sighted in for me. We'll be deer by this weekend. 6.5 Grendel. What can you tell me about the 6.5 Grendel? It's probably, I would say, the longest shooting cartridge in the AR-15 platform. And it runs, you can run it with 123 grain bullet or a 130 from Federal with a burger in it. Uh, it just has a lot of knockdown. 6.5 Grendel, ladies and gentlemen. The ballistic coefficiency on it is pretty amazing. I'm not ready for this winter stuff. I'm not either, I'm sitting here just like, it's 30 degrees and I'm so <laughs> Done. Done. Sighted in. Done. Dialed oh in God. at 100. Dialed in. Hit 100. How many shots did that take? That was 10 rounds. 25. Woo! 10 <laughs> rounds dialed in. <laughs> the new deer killing machine. Oh, yeah. Well, there it is. All ready to go. Packaged up. They treat you right. APF. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Garrett. Even though I'm pretty sure you didn't do anything. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Steve. Take care. Man. He's the man. He set it in for us. Let's go hunting. Yeah. Party dance. Party dance. No. <laughs> and we'll leave with that. And they'll even help you out the door. You just gotta be careful of that Garrett guy because sometimes he tries to get in the car with you. It's a little bit weird. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me! It's like he shoots guns for a living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not pulling the trigger when someone's shooting yeah. <laughs> Who was that? Hey! You scared him! Alright. Third time in the bow stand. 
the word on the street is things are picking up. Okay, so first, today is the first day of gun season in Minnesota, and Allie and I are gonna go out hunting together. We're gonna go sit in the ground blind. So I just brought Allie in. We sat for a few hours, uh, a couple of deer, a doe and a fawn. Why couldn't you shoot it instead? Well, it was kind of hard to see, and I could have shot it, but Allie wanted to see me shoot it. So I didn't want to shoot, and I probably could have made a good shot, so I didn't shoot. And uh, now, Take out this little guy. Ry Ry the guy guy. You ready to go hunting? Yeah. Okay. Day two of the Minnesota gun season. Saw some deer yesterday, just not the right deer. It's a cool evening, cold front just moved in, so hopefully deer are moving. Hopefully the bucks are running hard and stupid. Just a lot of corn up. Corn harvest is a little bit late. It's just getting started here. So there's a lot of cover. So a big eight pointer came out last night as I was sitting. It's one of the deer that we've had on camera, and I'm pretty sure it was a uh, pitchfork. But it came out, I had to make a decision fast. I made a fast shot uh, as the deer was going behind the brush, and it was not a good shot. So we tracked it for a couple hours last night, ran several hundred yards. It's not looking awesome. I'm pretty bummed, but we're back out this morning, and uh, gonna go give it a good look see and see if we can pick up the trail again and hopefully find a deer. The last blood we found last night. I'm going to continue on, see what we can find. Well, we followed the blood from where I shot the deer off and on. Not a lot of blood for half a mile or so and the deer was sticking to trails and wasn't bleeding much and the type of blood that we were finding eventually lost the trail but we figure we're hoping that the deer lives and will recover and that we or someone else will get another shot at him but it always sucks uh, it hasn't happened a lot to me I haven't shot at many deer because I'm pretty picky with the deer that I wait for now it always sucks to take a shot, hit a deer, and not recover it. And uh, I'm kind of kicking myself for making a fast shot. When that deer came out, I knew that I had the opportunity, and if I didn't take a shot, I probably wasn't going to get a shot. And in hindsight, you know, maybe I shouldn't have taken the shot. But when you see a buck that big, your heart gets pumping. And... Uh, <laughs> You want the deer. You want to take the shot. You don't want to let it get away. And so I pulled up on the deer, made a quick shot, and uh, wasn't a good shot. End of story. We're moving on. Life is good.